Hi guys and welcome to episode 5 of Giant Killers with Alessandria on Football Manager 2016. Obviously in the last episode we witnessed a 1-0 victory over Reggiana at home. Just after that game, the board provided us with a £375,000 cash injection. Obviously our finances were getting towards the minus 1 million mark. So they, they gave us that bit of a boost to get us down to around 650000 uh, we were third in the league after the, the Reggiana game. And the next game was against Ferelpi Salo. I think that's how you say it. So we played a 4-1-1-3-1 formation in this one with a defensive midfielder. Ferelpi Salo were 12th going into this match, so I thought we would have been able to easily win this one. But it wasn't to be. We were favourites for it. We were 4-6 to six favourites. Um... It was a very even game, very even in the first half, very even in the end as well. We did hit the post in the 89th minute, but to be fair, 0-0 is probably the, the fairest result for, for both sides. A disappointing game with very few chances. Um, but somehow this draw sent us up to second because Renat, who were second, lost to Cremonese. And the other teams around us dropped points, so that left us five points behind Cremonese in first place. Uh, for the next game, we were the late match in the next group of fixtures. So we dropped down to third as Renard had won 2-0 against Cuneo and Cremonese got beat 2-1 by Pordenone. So a victory could have moved us to within two points of Cremonese. However, that wasn't to be either. We played our 4-2-3-1 formation in this one. We were favourites. Um, in the first half, we had 17 shots to... Pavia's four, but we only had five on target. There was too many long shots, so I changed the instructions at half time to work the ball into the box, but then that meant that we were passing too much. So it was just either end of the scale. I had to choose which one to go with, whether I wanted them to have more long shots or whether I wanted them to just pass too much and not create many opportunities. Um, so we conceded our goal through some confusion between Siri and Leviso. I'll just try and show you that now. Mattia Marchi getting the, the what was the winner for Pavia. So Abate puts it in the middle. Siri and Leviso getting in the way of each other. Then Marchi, the brilliant finish. No doubt about that. But one of, one of the two defenders should have got that. Siri and Leviso. Not impressed at all with that. Uh, Bocalon missed two one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the 87th minute right after each other. And there's not much else I can say. Lots of shots in this game, mainly from far out. Not that many solid chances. So the stats kind of lie a bit. I'd say a draw would have been a fairer result, but you have to give it to Pavia. They they took their chance well. We, we didn't take our chances at all. So after this game, we were third. Level on 42 points with Mantova in fourth. And two points off Renat in second. Five points off top of the table, Cremonese. And just before this Padova match, Manuel Maris was named in the February the te Team of the Month for Serie C. So, nice little personal achievement for him there. We played a 4-4-2 diamond formation in this one. And were 5-4 to four favourites. Our goal came from a corner in the opening 10 minutes. It was Laviso with the ball in. I'll show you that one. So, Laviso with the corner. Crossed in and Mezavia. There we go, 1-0. I think that was a goal against his former club too. Judging by the commentary at the bottom, said he seems to be loving this. The fans aren't happy. Um, Fishnala picked up a neck injury on the 10th minute, unfortunately, so I had to bring Zakagni on for him. Uh, we only had three shots in the first half, two of them on target, compared to Bedova, who had 14 shots with eight on target, yet we still managed to hold on 1-0. Um, switched to a 4-2-3-1 formation at half-time, brought Bonaparte on for Nico as I changed the formation round, and Nico would have been playing at attacking right midfield, so I brought Bonaparte to, on to play there. Um, and somehow we managed to win this one. I honestly don't know how. We obviously did pick up our, our shots total in the, the second half to 13, but they had 27, and they had the majority of the highlights, to be honest. Every time we had a, what looked like was going to be our highlight, they grabbed the ball and counter-attacked us. And they were really unlucky not to win this one. So they were 17th in the table going into this one as well, so it's a bit... Very disappointing form heading into this all-important game against Cremonese. Um, after this game, got a news item 
So let me know that Fishnala was found to have a damaged neck and he'll be out for five weeks. Disappointing injury there. Uh, but the, the victory moved us up to second in the table, five points behind Cremonese in first, and one point ahead of third place, who I think is still Renard. I'll show you the table now. Yeah, point ahead of Renard, five points behind Cremonese, uh, who we play today in a very important game. We did get a get our youth intake as well. Only one real standout player in our youth intake, this guy here, Andrea Di Simone, who is a centre midfielder. Best position is centre midfielder. You can see he's got 16 passing at 16 years old. That is amazing. Obviously, he needs to improve on the rest of his stats, but that 16 passing is a standout stat for him. So hopefully, we can make him into a... A good player for us and unfortunately just prior to this match we lost Christian Sosa to an injury he sustained a strained stomach muscle while lifting weights during training and we are, will be out for between four and five weeks so our top assist make our top assister assister first news top of our assist list is um out I think he's still Still top. Just have a check. Yeah, Christian Sosa top of the assists with nine. Unfortunately, he's out. Going to be out for five weeks, which is worrying indeed. That'll take us near to the end of the season as well. We've got this all important game against Cremonese today, and we're not going into it in the best of form. It's a, it's a it's a slight slightly worrying. Okay, so Cremonese are 6-4 to four favourites for this one. And Aaron Gislason from ESPNFC.com reckons that they're going to win today because they're, they're high. They're on a high, they're not high. So if they're high, that would be very very bad news for Italian football. Um, they're on a high and that form should be enough to get them a victory over us today. And our oh, two injuries that we just received, Fischnall and Sosa, will hit us hard, apparently. We can tumble down the table if we fail to take at least a point. That is true. We could end up today in sixth place. Or fifth place, because our head to head with Mantova is better. So we could end up in fifth place today. Mantova have got a game in hand as well. Um, Cremonese are still in the cup competition, which could prove to be a distraction. That could be helpful for us. But obviously, a win today doesn't put us above them or anything like that. It just gets us two, three points closer which would make us two points away from them. Their key man is Giovanni Formacchioni. They've only conceded 19 goals in the 25 games that he's played in, the right back. So we'll just take a look at the teams. So we're playing a 4-2-3-1 formation today with Nordi in goal. Vito Francesco coming in for Sosa at right wing back. Manfran and Siri, a solid centre-backs. Sabato at left wing back. Mezavier and Nico in centre midfield. Got Manuel Maris on the right attacking midfield, Bonapurti on the left attacking midfield, Simone Manelli coming in for Fischnalla at attacking centre midfield, and then Michelle Marconi is the complete forward up top. And they're playing a 4 3 1 2 formation. So hopefully, our use of the wings will be able to help us in this one. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. And we'll ask him to take the team talk, and away we go. So, Cremonese kick off for the first half of this game. It's Gogulo to Creolese. Obviously, did we get thrashed in the first game of this? I can't remember. Last time we played them, I'm sure we got thrashed. Hopefully it's not going to be a repeat of that today. But like I said, our top assist maker is out injured. It's not our strongest lineup. Siri with a free kick plays that wide left to Sabato. Bonaparte. 
Maras gives that away to Rosso too easily. It's Gargulo now for Cremonese. Brugenti. Brugenti. Changing the pronunciation of his name all the time. It's Paolucci. Good tackle from Syrian cleared. Marconi's got it now. Holds the ball up well. Can he find someone? He can't. He finds Maras. Plays it back to Marconi, but the ball's hit too hard. Bonapurti may have suffered a bruised head. Yeah, I imagine he should be able to play through it. Some of these players are really soft. Formaconi with a throw in. It's Paolucci. It's Formaconi again. Rosso. Good save from Nordi. This is not looking comfortable. Creolese with a corner. Headed away eventually by Nico. Only to Creolese again. Rosso. To Russo. It's confusing. Cuccinello. Gargiulo. Good tackle from Manfran. Yet to have a chance, Alessandria, in this game so far. Mm, I think I'm going to... This is extremely dangerous, but it's a very important clash that we need to win. So I'm going to switch to attacking. Hope that can create some chances for us. Don't actually know what's happened to us in the last few games. Just got on a downward spiral. I mean, we won the last game, but we didn't deserve to. Manfran won the ball well there. Manelli, it's Nico. Looking for Sabato out wide. Good tackle from Sabato to maintain possession. It's Marconi. Maris is at the back post. Bit of time. Manelli, a bit of a scramble and it's cleared. That's a throw in. Vito Francesco to take the throw. Marconi, back to Vito Francesco, to Maris, crosses it in, cleared by Rosso, Paolucci to Brigenti, Vito Francesco did well to get back there, Gargiulo, Rosso, Formiconi, this can be a chance for Cremonese now on the break, Sabato with a good block and clears it, we're on the attack now, Bonapurti, great ball to Marconi, crosses it to Maris, Maris shoots, saved by Rivaglia, that was a great opportunity, great bit of play, We've got back into this one. Touch wood. Twenty five minutes gone, very even game so far. Mezavi has just picked up a yellow card. It's the fourth foul he's committed today. Brigenti. Brigenti running through Cuccinello now. Good tackle from Vito Francesco. Mezavia wins it more. More? No. Maris. Plays a forward line for Nico. Brigenti's oh, that's Briganti has got it to Bianchi. Rosso. We've got lots of names that sound similar to each other. Paolucci. To Criolese. Out wide left. Forward ball to Brigenti. <sighs> the side netting to let off. Throw in with Vito Francesco now. Manelli. Maras. Is that. Oh, he won the ball. I thought that might have been a penalty. Brigenti's got the ball now for Cremonese. It's Gargiulo to Rosso. Cuccinello back to Brigenti. Gargiulo. Good interception from Sabato there. Advancing forward with the ball. Plays it to Bonapierti. Plays it through to Marconi. Over the bar. He skied that opportunity. That was a great chance for us. Bianchi for Marconi. On the right. Can Sabato win the ball? No, he can't. It's Paolucci. And that's a terrible shot from Paolucci. Half an hour played in this does it does feel like it's a, a top two clash. Very close. Unexpectedly so, considering our our performance in the last game that we just managed to win. Well I guess they say that great teams manage to win when it looks like they they can't. Always find a way to win. It's Maras. Goes past one defender. Plays it to Nico. Mezavia. A wide left to Sabato. Plays it forward to Bonapurti. Chance to cross it. He does. Marconi. Saved by Rivaglia. Another great chance for us there. 
neither team's taken their chances so far. Both teams have had five shots. We're just edging it on the shots on target with two. Looks like we're going to be heading into half time level nil nil. There we go, nil nil at half time. Not bad. Quite happy with that. Held our own in this one. Um, considering taking Marconi off and bringing Boccolano on just for something different up front. I'm going to keep an eye on the, the two booked players, Mazavia and Maras. We don't have many options for bringing Maras off. We've only got David Sibioni. They'll probably be the two players that I'll choose to bring off. Hopefully they won't, um, won't get sent off or anything like that. We kick off for the second half. Hopefully we can sneak a goal in this one. Boccolon. To Nico. Is this going to be an immediate chance? No. He skies it high and wide. It's Medzavia. Bonaperti. Manelli. Maras. Great pass first time to Boccolon. Plays it through to Nico. Oh, good save from Ravaglia again. Nico should have scored that. He really hasn't got back into the swing of things since his injury. I feel if he hadn't been injured, he would have, he would have been banging them in all season for us. Crealese with the corner, headed away from Ezevier. Bianchi, back to Crealese. Crealese shoots, blocked. Rosso, Cuccinello off the post. Siri heads it back to Nordi. And we get away with it again. Nordi, long ball forward towards Boccolon, who flicks it on. There's no one there. Bianchi. Briganti to Brigenti, but Manfran intercepted. Crealese, Manfran intercepts again. It's Maris. Taking it down the right now. Can he cross it? Manuel Maris. He can cross it. Boccolon's there. Saved again by Ravaglia. For a nil-nil, this is very entertaining stuff. Vito Francesco with a throw-in on the right. Gives it to Manfran. Vito Francesco. Maris. To Manelli. Towards Nico. Great pass to Bonaperti, saved again by Rivaglia. Bonaperti with a chance to cross, but he's tackled by Formaconi. Cremonese come away with it. I think I'm going to do a, a quick team talk to passionately encourage. No need for subs just yet. I've noticed another player has picked up a yellow card, so Bardo's got one too. So another guy to keep my eye on. Make sure he's not doing anything stupid. Crealese crosses it. Paolucci. Man from with a good tackle. Brigenti out to Crealese. Paolucci's there. Cleared again. Both both sides piling the pressure on and both sides coping with it well in defence. Russo. This is a chance for a counter-attack for Cremonese. Paolucci. Looking towards Brigenti. Brigenti now. Shoots good save from Nordi again. It's a corner from Inese. Crealese takes it. The ball was headed back in towards the box then. Manelli just got rid of it. Crealese with another chance to cross it. He does. Paolucci's there. Good save again from Nordi. And that claiming the ball went over the line there. I don't think it did. Nico wins the header. Briganti wins it back though for Cremonese. Rosso. Formaconi on the right. Paolucci. Gogulo. Briganti saved again by Nordi. And Sabato comes away with the ball and clears it. But Cremonese are getting themselves on top in this one. I think it's time to make a, a bit of a change. Um, we are playing quite well. Maris is probably one of our weaker players and he's on a booking so we'll bring on David Sabioni for him and we'll leave it at that for the minute I'd quite like to bring on Leviso at some point for Mesavia. not do that yet Nico is not really very sharp either so we might have to take him off instead It's 
Throw in with Sabato on the left. Gives it to Manelli. Back to Sabato. Crosses it in. Russo's cleared it. It's a bit of a mistake in the box. Sabioni hits the post. That is the best chance of the game so far, I would say. David Sabioni, the substitute, almost scoring within minutes of coming on. That was so unlucky. For McConey with a throw. McNaggy must be a substitute. For McConey, back to McNaggy. It's Rosso, saved again by Nordy. Up to the 70th minute, still no goals. Plenty of chances for both sides. Briganti's been taken off. Marconi's come on for him. Crelazy with a free kick. Oh, what's the goalkeeper doing? Thankfully, he was offside and he saved it as well. Give credit to him there. He was out of position, but he managed to come back and save that, even though it was offside. 75th minute, final change time, I think. And it looks like it's going to be Metavia that's going to come off. We're going to bring Leviso on. Hope we can get at least a point today. So we head into the 80th minute of the game. Russo with a free kick for Cremonese to Rosso. For Maconi on the right. Nico intercepted well, but it's gone straight to Gargiulo. Cuccinello. Out wide left to Crialese. Paolucci. Blocked by Vito Francesco. Who gives it to Sabioni. Manelli. Chance for a possible attack for us now, maybe. Sabioni, long ball forward towards Boccolon. Boccolon's not got any support up there. Plays it towards Manelli on the edge of the box. To Bonapirti. Had a shot, but that was never going to go in. Siri won the ball well. Paolucci's got it for Cremonese. Plays it through towards McNaggy. Sabato should get there and does. Plays that back to Nordi comfortably. Ravaglia with a goal kick for Cremonese towards Magnaghi. He wins the ball. Siri didn't even seem to challenge him there. It's Magnaghi to form Coney. Benedetti, Gogulo. And that's a terrible shot. Never looked like going in that one. Tempted to go overload, but. See what this highlight brings. Might have to go overload if they score. It's Paolucci. Benedetti. Towards Formaconi. Sabato wins the header, but it's fallen to Cuccinello. Shoots, and it's a good save from Nordi again. I feel like playing it safe. Uh, Crealese with a corner. Manfran heads it out for another corner. If we go to overload, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to score. Crealese with a corner again. Nico heads it away. Rosso to Crealese. Cuccinello saved by Nordi. Headed into the last few minutes. In stoppage time, no point in changing anything. Let's just hope they don't get a, a late stoppage time winner. So less than 20 seconds to go, it's Russo. Trying to play to Gargiulo, this is a break for us, possibly Boccolon. We couldn't get the ball moving quick enough. That would have been a good chance as well, if you could have passed that well. It's Bonaparte, it's Marconi, and that's full time. Nil-nil. And that commentary on the bottom, referee calls time on a thrilling second half. I think it was quite a good game, to be fair, for a nil-nil. Not disappointing whatsoever. Quite happy with the nil-nil draw against them. To be fair. Uh, keeps us in second. Obviously, Renart and the teams below us have got games in hand. So they could go above us, especially Mantova. They've got two games in hand. They could go to within three points of Cremonese. But we held Cremonese off today, which I'm happy about. Um, obviously, our expectation for the season is only to reach the, the playoff table, which would be fourth. Uh, I would like to win the league, but I, I wasn't going to push it so far that we'd lose this game. It's a very important draw for us. Uh, Crealese for them was a man of the match. Manuel Maris for us only got a 6.7 rating. He was our key player. The referee didn't get a very good rating. Yeah, he was more than favourable to the visitors with most of his calls. 
a bit of corruption may be there. But like I said, very happy with a, a one a nil nil draw. One one. Where did I get that from? Nil nil draw against top of the league, Cremonese. We'll wait for this to load, and then we will have a look to see. Well, first of all, we'll see if other teams have played their fixtures yet, and see where where that leaves us. In the league table, and then we'll have a look to see who will be playing in the next live commentary, which I think is another top of the table clash between us and Renart in about a month's time. See if we can see any of them their results coming up. I don't actually know if they're playing today, the teams that are around us. Mantova got beat 2-0 off Padova. That's good. That means they've only got one game in hand now. So we'll go to Serie C. We're still second. Is that because of the teams haven't played? Who we got? So Alto Adige have played. They managed to draw 2-2 against Reggiana. We've still got Renat and Bassano who can at least get level on points with us. Renat are playing Citadella who are 11th and Bassano are playing against Podenone who are 13th. So they should realistically win those games. So we may end up being around about fourth or fifth. That's depending on how we did against Bassano. Yeah, we did get thrashed five one of Cremonese last time away from home. Um, against Bassano, oh, we lost two one. Urgh. We do still play some of the teams around us. We've got games left against Bassano, against Renart. Are they the only two? Bassano in fifth. Renat in fourth. Yeah. So next episode will bring the Renat game, which will be very important. Hopefully we'll still be within touch and distance of top of the league. Hopefully we'll have picked up some, some good form by then. Um, but that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel, get all my content when it comes out. Feel free to leave a comment below. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time for the game against Renart.